Nafisa Collier, Alana Smith, and head coach Cheryl Reeves speak after game two loss to the New York Liberty in the WNBA Finals. Check out the video. Thank you for joining us. We'll begin right away with questions uh, from the second row all the way to the right. Uh, coach, uh, within two with three, about 320 left, and you guys didn't score again. Did, was it just a matter of them turning up the heat or just you guys kind of struggling to get yeah, our, our offense was bad at a time when we really needed it. Our pace was slow, um, taking too long to get into things. And, um, you know, I don't think we were terribly hard to play against from, from that standpoint. And that was obviously a difficult time to be doing that. You, I think you were down 17 in the second quarter. It, it, the game had followed a very similar script to the first. You had to feel like when Courtney went there and scored that this game was in reach. How disappointing is it to let it get away in that fashion? I'm disappointed that we let it get to 17. I'm more disappointed than that. You know, I mean, I'm more than disappointed. I'm pissed that that happened again. The next question, front row center. Yeah, Nafisa, it, this game seemed to be called really differently first half to second half sure in did. terms of um, how hard is that? I'm not, I know you guys can't say much about officiating, but how hard is it when it's that dramatically different half to half in the same game? Um, I mean, it is, it's hard. You have to adjust to the refs. I mean, definitely it's not an excuse. We, we played really bad, um, so I'm definitely not using that as an excuse. But um, it's hard to adjust because you are playing one way and you're getting used to the refs and then they change it up. Um, but that's not why we lost. It wasn't them. It was us. So can't blame that. Our next question, front row to your left. Hi, ladies. Uh, Lauren from the 9450. Um, like you said, Coach, uh, Liberty were up 17 points. Um, didn't get the outcome that you guys wanted. However, the team stayed resilient, and we saw that in the last game too. How does this team continue to kind of stay resilient and not let the game get too – you know, it gets uh, – it's a distance between the, the lead. However, you guys kind of always are right there. Yeah, I mean, it's been talked about a lot. This is a, a group that problem solves well together. They never think they're out of it. Their, their belief in themselves and their belief in each other is top notch. Um, and we know it's a long game. You know, they're very experienced. And, um, you know, we just knew we had to clean up and, and get some things cleaned up. And we did that and then put ourselves in position right where we want it to be and, and uh, you know, just couldn't get over the hump. The next question, second row to your left. Hey, Coach, to follow up on that, you know, in the second half, he getting in foul trouble a bit. How did that affect the game and just overall switching the lineup when you guys need her in the most? I don't think it, I don't think it affected the game. I don't know if it affected her play. I mean, if he can answer that. But, um, you know, it was a chance to get her three minutes of rest. And, uh, you know, at the end of the quarter, that was fine. So it, and then she went back in, so it didn't affect us. The next question, front row center. Cheryl, what was the difference you saw in Benajah Laney Hamilton tonight? I mean, she said, or Sandy said she's not been 100% this postseason, but her kind of being that X factor tonight, what difference did she make? A uh, huge difference, right? So both games they've gotten, you know, help from uh, a part of their, you know, they, got, they have a big five, right? Their, their starters are all very capable, just like our starters are all very capable. And you need uh, players beyond your stars. And for two games they've done that. And, uh, you know, we, we're having trouble getting that consistently. We, we've got to have that. Uh, next question, standing all the way in the back to the right. Nafisa or Lan, either. Uh, not the result you wanted today, obviously, but is there some encouragement that you came here, you got the one win, you go home still having stolen home court advantage, you get to play the next two at home? Um, I mean, yeah, obviously you want to steal one on the road. Um, we're really disappointed, I think, in how we played today. But excited to go home, play in front of our crowd, and we have to respond. We have to come out playing better than we did in these two games. Um, it's hard. Like, we're both competing for a championship. You have to play with a level of desperation from the very beginning. So um, that's what we're going to need to do to come out with um, in game three. Uh, next question, front row to your right. For you, to, to that end, is it harder to play with desperation when you get a fourth foul, when you're in that moment? And do you have to sort of change the way you're thinking about how to close out, how to, how to attack on the defensive end? I honestly don't think I changed my mindset. I feel like I stayed aggressive on defense. Um, I was frustrated that I had those four fouls, but I, didn't, I don't think it affected me in the way that I was playing. Uh, third row to the right. All the way to the right, third row. Hey, Cheryl, uh, Alana's defense has been outstanding on JJ. Uh, I, obviously, there are times she gets help, but for the most part, she's doing an outstanding job, I think. Can you talk about her play? Are you her uncle? <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Do I look that old? Uh, no, I, I happen to agree with you um, that, uh, you know, Lan is, um, you know, I had a chance to talk to Joe Ingalls. I didn't know if I had told uh, Lan this when we were in Minneapolis and, um, you know, he asked me how I liked my Australian and, and we talked about all the ways um, that we love, the way that Lan plays and her level of compete. And that's what Joe said. He's like, one thing you're darn sure an Australian's going to do is they're going to compete their tails off, and Lan is the very definition of that. doesn't matter how big, doesn't matter what, how difficult it is, Lan is always there for us in that way. Next question, fifth row, all the way to the right in the back. Cheryl, uh, you played Heidemann a lot of minutes, especially down the stretch. We, what did she give you, and what was she really providing for the lineup that you had? Well, we were trying to get a, uh, another ball handler out there, somebody that they had to pay attention to, try to get downhill a little bit, try to create some easier opportunities playing with flow. Um, you know, setups weren't necessarily, um, you know, producing anything for us. And so we just thought spread the floor and play with two ball handlers. Anyone else? Uh, fourth row to the number two there, fourth row. All the way back. Hey, Cheryl. Um, Sabrina, what changed in, in how you guys approached guarding her between the first quarter and, and the final three? Did anything change or, yeah? Well, I mean, she had, what she have at half? Uh, 12? And she had uh, 10 of them were in fast break. 10 of them were fast break. So what changed is she wasn't able to get it in the fast break, and, and we had her in the half court. Uh, front row to the right. Cheryl, I'd ask you a, a similar question about Brianna Stewart, knowing how game one ended and the play she was involved in and trying to game plan for her in this game, assuming that she might try to make up for that in some form. What did you see coming in, and what did you see today? I think Stewie's the same. I don't, I don't think that making or missing a shot or a free throw. I mean, you guys, we do this long enough that those things happen. Um, she's resilient. She played exactly like we, we thought she would. I thought she played great uh, in game one. Uh, and so, you know, I think her impact uh, defensively uh, was something that we felt. Um, you know, but she have seven steals. Uh, and so, you know, then she's been doing that in this, in this playoff. So, um, but I think it's more than that. It had nothing, I, in my mind, I mean, you have to ask Stewie, but... I don't think that's what was on her mind. I think her, what was on their collective minds was it's a must-win game for them. And they came out, and, and they played like it was, and they, and they took the game. Uh, we have time for just a couple more. Front row center. Yeah, Coach Reeve, you said there's things, obviously, you've seen both these games, you know, that you guys can do a lot better. Is there some comfort in that of knowing, you know, you're coming out with a split, even though you probably feel like you haven't played your best in either Yeah, one um, but I think the opponent has you know, a fair amount to do with it. So we've got to come up with – you know, uh, better opportunities and, and, and better things that we can do uh, offensively, you know, so we can get back to our little bit more of a balanced scoring. And um, so I think that's most important to say is New York's had a lot to do with this. Uh, next question, and this will be our last question, uh, front row to the left. Hey, Coach Corey from the 9450. How important is the bench in a series like this when it's tightly contested like it is, you know, two great teams? How important is your bench going to uh, be able to uh, help you out with the one swing? Yeah, Minnesota? I mean, you've got, you've got players that are playing a lot of minutes, a lot of heavy minutes, and, and uh, anytime you can get your bench to come in and be productive and you can keep, keep them out there longer, that's an advantage. Um, uh, but I don't think either bench has been – um, necessarily a separator. Um, you know, we talked about Heidemann in the last game. Uh, you know, she scored it. I think she had 10, right? So that was impactful. But, um, you know, both teams are looking for anywhere else you can go so that you don't have all this pressure on your, on your top players. Alana, Cheryl, Nafisa, thank Thanks. you. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next video, Hoop Life Family.